Hi, I'm going to talk to you about uncertainties in graphs and I'll specifically be focusing on gradients and wind sets at the end of the presentation. So how do you determine the uncertainty, the experimental uncertainty in the gradient and wind set that you've, you've plotted from experimental data? Okay, so the first thing is a bit of a general approach to interpreting graphical information and that is about the reliability of your data. So we can interpret the scatter of plots about your line of best fit. Okay, so if you have a small scatter of points, that indicates that you have some reliable data. If you have some scatter, a bit more scatter, they're just, you know, if they're not so close to the line, then you have unreliable data. So if we just have a quick look at what that might actually mean, um, a good rule of thumb is if you have five plots within plus or minus five mils of the line, then you've got reliable, something reliable. That's in the instance where you're plotting six data points on a line, so if you've got five of them within plus or minus five, then that's, that's good. Okay, so yeah, if you've got your uh, dependent and independent variable here, there's your line best fit. That's your scatter. So this, we would say, is they're all quite close to the line, so that's small scatter. We would interpret that as some reliable data. If you did the experiment again, um, you should get um, something reliable at the end of it. Um, if they're a bit more like this, then that's some um, scatter, and we'd say that's not reliable data. So we definitely want something better than this. So that's the first thing, looking at your data to judge your, the, the reliability of the data that you can use to plot your graph. Okay, now, um, when you plot a graph, you will we'll often need to plot some error bars onto your graph. And what the error bars indicate is the absolute uncertainty in the measurements for that variable. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this table of data here. So we've got some current values here, we've got some deflection measurements here. And the deflection measurements have got some absolute uncertainty associated with them. We actually took logs of both of those and the log values were used to plot a log graph. If you're not familiar with logs, the, that's not so important at the moment. All you just need to appreciate is here are the absolute uncertainties. If you're not sure how to deduce the absolute uncertainty for log values, I have actually made a video on that, so you should check that out. Uh, but we, what we do is we're going to plot a graph with error bars using this data, and the error bars are going to indicate the absolute uncertainty of the log y values on the graph. So here's the graph. Here are our plots here. Hopefully you can see those on the uh, video there. So we've got some plots on there. And we've got log i is here, log y is here. So this is our y data, this is our x data. So I'm going to show you the error bars for the y data. And here they are. Okay, so these are the error bars here. As you can see, the absolute uncertainties are not all the same. We've got 0 0.03, 0 0.03, 0 0.02, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. So these larger ones are the 0.03s. I've put those values on there now, actually. So these are the 0.03s, 0.02s, and these are the 0.01s here. Okay? So those are our error bars. We need to draw those. And so because it's plus or minus 0.03, I'm drawing a line. 0 0.03 above my data point, 0 0.03 below the data point, using this, the scale on the axis here. This is 0 0.03 above, 0 0.03 below, 0 0.02 above and below, and these are 0 0.01. So 0 0.01 was one small square on my scale grid. So that's, that's how you draw error bars. Obviously, use a ruler, use a sharp pencil to draw those on the graph. Okay, so that's what error bars are. How do we use those? So when you draw a line of best fit, obviously that's got to go through all your error bars. But when you're thinking about uncertainty, so I mean, drawing a line of best fit is quite straightforward. Um, but when you think about the uncertainty of a gradient from your line of best fit, then you're going to need to draw what's called a line of worst acceptable fit. A line of worst acceptable fit, 
must firstly pass through all of the error bars. And what we do is we start the edge of one error bar on the lower data point, and we finish our line, it's a straight line, at the opposite edge of the upper error bar. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so this is our line of best fit here. You can see that's obviously going through all of the error bars. The error bars are marked on there for you. A line of worst acceptable fit can start at the bottom of this error bar, so if this is the lower error bar, and finish on the opposite side, so it'll be at the top of the upper error bar. So it's going to look like this, straight line from there to there, okay? It's passing through all of the error bars, it's going from one extreme at the lower end to the opposite extreme at the other end. That's a line of worst acceptable fit. It's acceptable, it goes in a sense, it goes through all the error bars, but it's the, the worst possible line you could draw for those error bars, if you like, because it's going from one extreme to the other. So that's going to give you the maximum change in gradient that you could expect for your line of best fit. You could, of course, start at the top extreme here and go to the bottom extreme over there. So what would that look like if I just fade out the other one? Here's the other option you could take. Passes through all of the error bars, just going from one extreme to the opposite extreme. So those are your options for drawing a line of worst acceptable fit. Okay, so how do we then use this to work out the uncertainty in graphical values, such as the gradient and the y-intercept? We'll deal with the gradient first. The process is actually the same, so the procedure is the same, um, but obviously how you actually take the measurements will be sort of different. So firstly, the gradient, what we do is we calculate the percentage uncertainty in the gradient. Between the, and this is between the best and the worst. So here's my best line, here's my worst line that I'm using for this demonstration here. Okay, so we work out the gradient for our line of best fit, taking points that are on the line, not data plots, because your data plots may not be on the line. Yeah, this one is not on the line either. So I've taken readings from the actual line of best fit. So lines of best fit, we get x1 is 1.7, x2 1.975. Y1 is 0.41 and Y2 is 0.85. So the gradient is 0.85 minus 0.41 divided by 1.975 divided by 1.7 gives you 1.6. So that's the gradient of our line of best fit. Now what we do is work out the gradient for our line of worst acceptable fit. So there we are, We're taking the points on the line again. Obviously you can take the data plots here because data plots are typically very far away. And of course, I think your gradient triangle is nice and big, you know, it's good graph skills. Okay, so line worst acceptable fit, I've got 1.7, 1.975, so the x values are the same, but basically we've just shifted down and up a bit. So we've got 0.39 and 0.86 here. So when we substitute that into our gradient equation, just like before, this time we get 1.7. So these are our two gradient values that we're going to use and to work out percentage difference to give us the uncertainty in the gradient, the percentage uncertainty this is, we do the gradient of the worst acceptable line minus the gradient of the best. We're taking the modulus of that, we're just interested in the magnitude of it, divided by the best. So the key thing is, since you're taking the modulus, it doesn't really matter which way around you do this, part of the arithmetic, the subtraction, but you must always divide by the best, okay? So difference divided by the best times 100. So we get 0.1 divided by 1.6 times 100, that gives us 6.3% in this case. So that's how you work out the uncertainty in the gradient. It's a percentage difference calculation, you've got to work out the gradient. The best fit, you probably would have done that in some graphical analysis anyway. I mean, you just The additional thing is to work out the gradient of the worst acceptable line. So that's how you do that. Hopefully that will make sense. The procedure for the y-intercept is identical, but obviously you're just dealing with y-intercept values. So percentage difference between 
the y-intercept of the best line, y-intercept of the worst line. Obviously, this could involve a little bit of work if you have a false origin, which we did on this case. So our lines are not going through the origin, uh, through the um, x naught value. So we can't see the y-intercept here. We have to calculate it. So this was the data we had for our line of best fit. We already had that. So we actually already had the gradient as well. Uh, it was 1.6, wasn't it? So to work out the y-intercept, you use y equals mx plus c. c is the y-intercept, so rearrange that and you get y minus mx. So all you need is a y and x coordinate from the align, and you can work it out uh, if you've already got the gradient, which you do. And since we used coordinates from the line to work out the gradient, we've already written those down. So we're going to use y1 and x1 here. So y1 was 0.41, so we do 0.41 minus gradient times x1. So that's what we're doing there. We get a y-intercept value of minus 2.3. I'm not going to labour that point because working out the y-intercept using y equals x plus c is quite, it's quite basic. So um, hopefully you're already familiar with that. Anyway, yes, yeah, so we get a y-intercept of minus 2.3. For the worst acceptable line, same procedure, we already had the coordinates, we have the gradient already, it was, it was actually 1.709 to 4SF, so I'm using the 4SF value for my subsequent calculation. So y1 is 0.39, the gradient was 1.709, and x1 was 1.7, so you put those in and we get minus 2.5, so now we can do our percentage difference calculation. So the uncertainty in the y-intercept is the difference between the worst and the best, taking the modulus again, divided by the best. And um, again, I'm, I'm taking the modulus here because we're only interested in the magnitude. So uh, yes, we do the difference here. We get 0.2 divided by 2.3 times 100 gives us 8.7%. And so that is how you work out the uncertainty in graphical values, whether it's gradient or y-intercept. And additionally, I showed you the, um, the, how to just judge the reliability of your data from the scatter.